Wesley Stevens, thank you for being here. Uh, welcome to the, the Distro Boss podcast. I'm super excited to speak with you. I've spoken to you before. Uh, I, you have introduced me uh, to your to your business, uh, Qualify AI, and it's super cool in terms of its functionality, what it can potentially provide to the masses. Something that um, you know isn't isn't really easily accessible, although they make out that it is. And it's all about getting access to capital in the form of grants for businesses, people who want to start something up. Um, look, people, you watch the news and stuff. Everyone's always talking about, oh, there's grants available. There's grants available. You know, like, okay, but then you go online looking for these grants. You're like, well, where are they? Um, and then you find one or two here and there, but there are actually thousands. And what your platform does is help, like it aggregates everything and makes it very, very simple to A, search it, but also make applications more streamlined too. So look, let's let's let you kind of just introduce yourself and take it away because I'm just super excited about this conversation. Yeah, thanks, Sav. Great to be here. Um, yeah, so Equilify is a, uh, a platform where we are brokering um, innovations and funding right we really we really want to see a world where uh, if i have a great idea then i should be able to find the people that and the money that can help me get off the ground right capital and resources right and yeah it's exactly as you said you know in when it comes to grants um you know you can browse on google all you want and say you know grants for my business and Chances are everything you'll see is is very competitive and not really related to what you're doing. Um, and so we've kind of taken an approach of, well, what if in by doing that Google search um, and looking at your profile and you know everything that you are wanting to do, we can actually curate you that list among the tens of thousands of grants that are out there, uh, the ones that you should really be looking at, right? and help you every step of the way um, in actually acquiring that grant. So it's the grant that's ma that would match what you're doing. And that's like, exactly. that's it. like it's not just like, oh, I want to start, I want a small business grant. It's like, well, what type of small business grant? Like, is it deep tech? Well, there's like five grants available for that. If it's like philanthropy, there's five grants for that. If you something to do with renewable energy, well, there's 17 grants for that. Like, and here's, the, exactly. and here's them ranked. It's like, that's, that's really, valuable just for just people just from a resource perspective just to know what's out there and they you know i think when you have a grant also i think they like feed a lot into like your business plan too right because it's oh, like certainly. you have this idea and then you're like okay let me find a grant and you find a grant and the grant's like well we're going to pay for this so okay let me just go back to my idea <laughs> yeah. make, make and honestly idea <laughs> there's a lot of uh there's a lot of grants out there that will fund pretty much what you want to do but not exactly what you want to do and so yeah it's it's up to you to say oh yeah i'm, I'm willing to do this pivot um it, or this this sidetrack to get money for my business and expand this area of it that i wasn't expecting to in the past right yeah i wonder how many like companies would actually truly attribute their actual current business strategy to the grant it, the grant parameters <laughs> itself like so what why was it so innovative yeah it was all me or well, really wasn't because <laughs> that's all they'd pay for like <laughs> you know, you know like, a lot of for-profits don't end up going for grants just because they're so cumbersome yeah um you, you get that with a lot of nonprofits because you know that's their lifeblood uh it's either get a grant or do fundraising yourself um but for a lot of for-profit um there's there's just so much competition and it's so hard to find and the, the windows are so short. Uh, it's, it's really hard to land anything. Um, I've been fortunate with Qualify to uh, be able to use Qualify to get a grant for Qualify. Um, um, and that was a really cool experience to kind of see it actually like, like do what we say it's doing. Um, but uh, the grant I found uh, luckily didn't have me sidetrack anything at all. I was like, oh yeah, this is exactly what we want to be doing. And the, the synergy is perfect. And that's the beauty of, of the alignment, because uh, when you look, when you talk to grant makers, they, they'll tell you, you know, we put a grant out there and 70%, 80%, 90% of the applications that we actually got weren't even related to the thing that we put a solicitation out for. And that's why a lot of grant makers now are moving away from ultimate solicitations to, you know, hiring people to do their own due diligence and reach out to people for requests for proposals. Right. Um, and, but with Quilify, we, we solve that alignment issue. Um, it's a guarantee, right? 
uh, we don't surface things that aren't potentially relevant to you, uh, potentially relevant to helping your, pro your prog, your product or your research or, or whatever it is, your initiatives, uh, to take the next step forward. And, and it's doing that with its own brain. That's what people aren't going to realize like they, they, we haven't said it yet because it's got its own brain. It's like, it's, it's AI enabled, right? I, yeah. I don't even know if, that, if that's the right way to even define it. AI enabled. That almost sounds like, cause you're not plugging into like open AI. You're not plugging into like, an no, this is all my own stuff. So you created your own artificial intelligence to intellectually independently collect all this information out there. And you're going to have to do a demo in a minute, but why don't before you do the demo, because like, look, for everyone who's listening on audio, well, sucks for you. Like you need to go to the YouTube video because this is where you're going to see it because it's really cool. But like, before you go into the demo, do tell us like what, how it's built, not as much as you can say, like tell us the, how, yeah. how the brains work with this thing and why it's able to do what it does so successfully. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of it comes from the, the new large language model technology. It's not a large language model, but uh, it's a lot of the same ideas, right? You feed it enough data um, where it can get a really good understanding of words and how they relate to each other contextually, semantically, and um, and even into like the niches of of specialized research, you know. Um, and so it has all these all these connections um, as given to it by all the data that we fed it. And then when you uh, tell it, Hey, this is what I'm doing. Uh, it can go out there and compare it against all of the different, um, uh, solicitations that are out there and be able to say, you know, swipe, right, swipe, left, swipe, right. You know, uh, this is good. This is close. This is not, is not relevant. Right. And then it actually can additionally say, Hey, I surfed this idea, this grant for, for you, for your idea. And. I think it's relevant for you, um, but you may not see exactly why, and I can tell you why it might be relevant. Uh, I actually did a case study with um, a uh, company looking to do some application with uh, nano silver particles, right? And it came up in just a couple minutes with uh, two Department of Defense grants um, that it, they would never have considered Otherwise, you know, I think one was like, uh, use sound waves to, uh, figure out how to agglomerate particles. Right. And another one was like, Wait, uh, we, we need, what is that? What does that word even mean? Agglomerate, like collect. Collect. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> like this is where like, <laughs> you have to like, like, like make things very, very simple for me. Um, gotcha. so it's like, what was that? Something to do with particle agglomerate, collect, yeah, collect, particles, yeah, <laughs> collect like particles. And I mean, you wouldn't, you never think, oh yeah, that has something to do with nano silver, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but but then you read it, uh, its explanation, and it's like, well, hey, you know, you said you needed to do research on like the different particle sizes and how it's safe with humans, and you know, uh, get those ranges for the the product that you want to do. Now this won't help you create the product you want to do, but it will let you do the research on all of those particle sizes uh, that you were looking at earlier. Wow. I can almost, um, as you said that a, I thought that is the real definition of like computer science, right? There. <laughs> but also, um, you know, I had a conversation with a guy recently about the difficulties of like managing or, or just working with gene sequencing because there's so much information out there. I can almost imagine the application here, this app, this being something that could assist in. in oh yeah. I just read an article the other day on, on using, uh, gene sequencing with language models to, um, uh, come up with uh, cures to diseases and things without, like that. Without hallucinations. Without hallucinations. <laughs> uh, they were able to show that, uh, there's this like this, um, what do you call it? Not Adam, um, like, I guess a gene sequence or something like that yeah. in the kidney that it, some guy discovered after getting like a hundred liters of blood, <laughs> you know? Um, and 
they didn't tell the AI was there, but they were able to, the AI was able to pick it out and say, Hey, this is, this is a thing. Right. Um, wow. and I mean, it, and it did that in just a couple months, whereas it took mankind, you know, how many thousands and millions of years to get there. Yeah. I can see everything just the speed at which we're going to like cover ground now with technological advances and just information, um, access to information, understanding things is going to just be like, stupendous at the minute. You know, just I don't looking. think anyone has an, a true idea of where will, what things will look like in the next 10 years. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going <laughs> back. I'm just like looking back because if it's learning, if, if we're talking about the large language models, the GPTs, and it's based off everything that's ever done, I'm pretty sure Terminator is going to be up there somewhere major. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, okay, if you're going by what we've already given you, there's some pre there's some prerequisites in play. I mean, in terms of what we could expect to come next based on the information you've been given. Yeah. Right. Um, well, I think what you are doing though, and I had a conversation with a guy, um, recently Ali Al Ibrahim, he was just last week and he, it was about him building, um, an AI. Uh, he was building it from the ground up where like it has the intelligence of a clam at the moment. And, you know, mm -hmm. he's basically shooting for dog level where he basically he's training the AI independently. So that's not working off a of GPT. It's not working off this large data set that's been given by Tesla and given by, um, provided by Google or whatever. And so it's like, it's not now or open AI. It's, it's, it's basically learning from you. You are essentially teaching it. Um, and so he wants that to kind of grow. That's his kind of project that he wants, because he wants to kind of it's going to hopefully meet in the middle with like the large language models. Like, so where you will end, eventually end up with a very trustworthy AI companion, perhaps, um, because, you know, it's kind of like having like the Tesla bot that what, what did they call Optimus or whatever it was it's called now, or, or, yeah. or some other kind of like AI I robot type of scenario where it's like, do you want that in your house that's been trained on Google's data set and Tesla's, or do you want it trained on what you want it to know? Um, or at least find that happy medium where these two technologies can, can combine. Um, so it, it blows my mind, but in, in regards to your application with qualify, like you've, you, how did you come to that? Like conclusion? Like you didn't just say, I mean, the way I would do it as a entrepreneur, a typical standard entrepreneur is like, okay, let me get every grant available everywhere, put them in a big sheet and then get like this thing to basically, and just like index them. You know, and then, and then like, I'll make a search and it will just, you know, keywords and index features will just pull, pull the relevant up. And I guess that yeah. might be done before. What made you go to the lengths of using this homegrown created AI to, to provide this, this service? Where did that come from? Yeah. And so a lot of ha it has to do with my background, um, you know, uh, bachelor's in math, master's in, in uh, data science. Um, I've been bouncing around different industries and companies for the past seven, eight years, um, uh, doing different AI applications, you know, from, uh, inventing my own neural network architectures and, uh, meta learning methodologies, uh, in the computer vision world to building reinforcement learning applications and, um, uh, now with natural language processing, what I'm doing now. Um, and so I have this background deeply in, in AI, right. And as I went through my different employment experiences, um, I started to, I'm sure to which are many expand. because you're an AI <laughs> guy now, like they're just throwing money at you guys. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were doing pretty well there for a while. Um, the entrepreneurship world has not been so kind, but I think it will be in the future. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, uh, as I went out through these different experiences, uh, there's just so much to learn. I was just gobbling it all up, you know, um, and started learning about the different things you can do in AI, how it works with databases and database architecture. And then I started exp expanding outside of AI into like front end, back end, cloud development until you know, a couple of years ago when I ended up realizing, Hey, I can do everything full stack AI. Um, and that really excited me. And so I, when I jumped, I jumped into entrepreneurship, doing a different company about two years ago now, and I started applying my, 
my expertise. And so I built a couple different applications that didn't get off the ground, you know, a video collection site looking at um, many to one problem, um, built a uh, data uh, to SQL to CSV file grabber. You would just uh, type in, you so know, hey, I, I want data. So lots of information to a database to a CSV spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, and you would just be able to talk, like talk to it, like ChatGPT does now, oh, wow. right? And well, how, you would just how, be able to how say, "How valuable would that be for like insurance underwriting?" <laughs> just that, right? That one and that's what I thought too. Um, <laughs> I've learned a lot of things about business over the past uh, two years, uh, um, and it's been really enlightening experience in entrepreneurship. Um, and so, you know, going from there, and then I I built a, a paralegal application um, for personal injury lawyers. Uh, automating some of their data extraction tasks. Um, and with each experience, I got sure. Actually, more personal injury lawyers. So that's, that's a <laughs> phenomenal amount of data. Oh yeah. No, they would uh, throw at me it. like 500. Like just said, but like, it's a phenomenal <laughs> amount and the application, and there's a lot of money behind it there. You know, like there's like, uh, yeah. that's, that's career. That's like, that's your career, right? Because you know, you're not going to go short with insurance. Oh, uh, certainly. You know, now that one was really interesting because um, I was able to take these like 500 plus page PDFs and extract all of the information that you could want of like, you know, uh, who, what was injured, uh, where did it happen, uh, on what date, uh, who did they go see, what were the doctor's notes on that visit. You know, and extract all these information from all these um, combined PDFs, and say exactly this information is located on this page um, for their medical summary. And so, the process for personal injury lawyers that takes you know somewhere around six weeks, and my software was able to do it in about three minutes. Wow! Yeah. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, that business hasn't gone anywhere due to some um, co-founder issues. But oh wow! Oh, really exciting that, stuff. That old chestnut. Coconut. That old chestnut. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I know about that. Like, you know, there's many times I've been in business where you, once you 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 start wanting to go in two different directions, and then you're just at loggerheads. You you just can't move. Like you like, and then it's like, who was the one with the first? It's like you're trying to pick the captain of the ship in the end, right? It's like, well, who? Where did? Where was this idea idea seated? Like, who was the? Who's the real like visionary here? And should it fall onto the visionary shoulders to take the direction, or should it fall to someone else with what could be considered the sensible decision? And it's like, it's like, and and then you you have this situation where it's like, and also it's a skill thing. So who's more skillful at actually mm -hmm. delivering the long term outcome compared to like the short term? short-term vision it's like so and you, you just got this like well short-term gain versus long-term gain it's like it's like this non-stop kind of push and pull and you can get stuck i get that I, and i've been there i've been yeah, there certainly. plenty of times you know, it's a maybe, painful experience and you know you hope that you can go through it and get around it and sometimes you just can't and you just have to walk away and move on to the next thing yeah you know the absolutely. good thing is there is always a next thing right especially if you're a full stack and you can build it i mean that, <laughs> it's like that's like you know you, you're you're an you're able to construct something that's that can be so like groundbreaking like it's like whatever idea comes to your mind and this is what i i wish i was able to do i mean i i wish i was in your shoes where i could say okay i have this concept let me now apply this this vast amount of experience this ability to build a front end website the ability to build a back end brains behind this thing and actually slap it together and put it online i mean i i talk about people uh concept like how how people should get into business right i actually wrote a book right it's there distro channels a distro book <laughs> right um i just got my a, a bunch of them i just re, just published it on um on amazon and i just ordered a few so they're going to sit behind me now forever um now I, one of the things I say in there is like for people who are starting out businesses, what you want to do is you want to pick a sector, a sub market that you like. So like, which is it fitness? And if it's in fitness, what's the sub market, right? You can't pick your niche because you're going to create your niche, right? So you want to find out who else is in that niche that you kind of in that sort of sub market that is as closely aligned to what you want to do as possible and then build or buy an audience in that market. If you can build them as in you can collaborate with those people, access those audiences, or if you want to 
go down the content creation route road and build them yourself or you just buy into them right send ads out go to them or pay the influencers or audience people who own the audiences there once you've got a big enough audience and you remember you haven't got a product yet you haven't got an offer yet you just know that this is the world you want to be in this is where kind of you want to work and mm -hmm. then you've got an audience next thing you want to do is survey the hell out of them ask them what they want essentially ask them a whole ask them what they want in so like 25 different ways almost as if it's a customer satisfaction survey or like, but like really you're just trying to find out what it is that they really want because you're going to get answer clusters, which probably your AI could help you with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, inter here's 55. Because, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Here's 55 different answer clusters um, based on like 25,000 people who've responded and they generally fall into these five different desirables this is what they actually want and this is the one that they want the most <laughs> and it's like well then oh my god that's i'm just getting a brainwave okay <laughs> might have to have a conversation but it's like <laughs> but it's like you've got these answer clusters and you know now what people want and to be in your boots where you can essentially go ahead and create the thing because now that's where most people get stuck it's like yeah. well you said you wanted cellular service on the underground subway system well i'm not the government and i'm not <laughs> i don't i i don't think i can build that business but it's like whereas when you're talking about people who are capable and um you know people get stuck there people get stuck in this like they get they they find out relatively a good idea they get a good idea of what needs to be created but they just don't have the skill to do it whereas you can yeah. you can go ahead and build something and yeah, i think exactly. that's an extremely valuable skill to have but you get trapped do you always work for yourself now or do you work for the company Exactly. You and, and that was my uh, inciting reason to jump into entrepreneurship. The first place was, you know, I, I never felt like I was performing at my best uh, and making the kind of uh, progress and impact that I wanted to be making in any, any of the companies that I was a part of. Um, and, you know, nothing against those companies. They're uh, great experiences. They're great people. Um, um, it's just, you know, the, the large company corporate lifestyle is just not conducive with my ambitions and skill sets. Right. Yeah. Um, it's been, but my, at the, on the flip side, you know, my ability to actually execute on, on visions that I have is as astounding. And that's my favorite part about building these, uh, these products zero to one, you know, every, uh, all the, the things that I talked about that I did before Quilify, you know, I was able to take a, uh, an experience from there and something that I learned that I didn't know about before from there and apply it to the next thing. Right. Yeah. So, okay. Well, listen, listen, I, I've been itching to say this because I basically, <laughs> and this is like, again, where people on audio, you know, like I said, sucks for you. Like you need it. Like, let's see this in action because this is not, um, like this is not chat GPT. This is not, you know, um, being, or this is not Gemini, but you know, I used to be known as Bard. <laughs> like this is, this is something that you have truly built full stack. You've applied it to this problem and it works. And I, and when you showed me, it kind it just blew my mind. And I think, especially when it came to like, just, uh, me giving it a prompt and it understanding, I, I, you know, that's when I, when I saw that happen in chat GPT, it was like, a, I expected it, it was almost expected because of the sheer amount of brain power and, and resource that that company has. And, you know, with, with conversations with Musk and you know, everyone. So, but then you, you, you created the same, well, almost the same feeling that the same, the same output. So go ahead. Can you show, share the screen, show everybody what it is that I'm gushing about? Because I think yeah, that certainly. needs to happen. Certainly. Let's pull this up here. And what I'll do is I'll show you uh, V1, which is is online right now. Um, and then I'll give you a sneak peek into V2, which we're just about done developing. Oh, yeah? And you're going to really enjoy that. You've already got the upgrade. <laughs> You've already yeah. got the upgrade. Okay. People are in for a treat. I had... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exclusive on uh, on Sav's po Distro Boss podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. This is brilliant. Let's see here. Yeah, man. Like this, it's so, and, and right. anyone out there who's like, who's got concepts, you need to come to this, 
to, to go to this is 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 such a resource to access the capital that you need and there's tons of money i mean if you look at the screen right now i can we're going to have to narrate this as best we can um <laughs> right now you're scrolling across across the screen where there is a myriad of different grants available all in the millions and even billions um and so if that is this just like the the total list is this the big list is this everything? so this is all the searches that i've done in the past uh to yeah. test uh the platform show people um yeah, everything right and so you know it works really well on on everything from you know after school engagement initiatives to ev parking structures to orbital degree debris impact predicting oh, wow. to cancer funds Hang on, that was 103 um, million available <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, HVAC transitions, for, uh, startup accelerators, right? Um, and the beautiful thing about this, and there's the nano silver particle one. Oh yeah. Uh, the beautiful thing about this is that it has such a wide understanding of of different niches and different ways of talking about the same thing, uh, and that's that's where the brain comes in is it's able to take all of those varieties of, of ways of speaking and, and niches, uh, in all sorts of different, uh, industries from like physics to chemistry to, you know, um, women's beauty <laughs> health wow. or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, okay. and it's able to, to take that information and just find the money. Right. And then it's just up to you on, you know, what exactly do you want to do? So you just kind of give it, you, you, you're you basically going to talk to it. It's not like you're going to go through a whole bunch of drop down boxes. That's what I really loved about this, because I think everything's going to go that way. I mean, even with my, I have a software platform and it's clicky. You, you go in there, you have to click around stuff. Like you have to go through filtration and tell it, we have the software where it's, you know, you can tell it who your ideal customer is and it's going to find all the people, places and things that have access to those customers in the form of influencers and thought leaders and people at the moment. And, yeah. but to do that, you have to, you, you're sifting through a very large database. And so to do that, you have to go through this whole, you know, location, age, gender, um, go through engagement rates and keywords, mentions, hashtags, and you have to kind of go through every filter, um, as well, as much as you want, add the information and then cl click submit and then see what you get. Whereas what you've created here. And, and this might just be because I'm, I'm a novice and I think, but I think this is where like the mass, the general public can really benefit from your system because as much as having all the complexities and the details and um, available, you've given people a very intuitive way to sift through and pass that information. And that's, that's what we're exactly looking at right. here. This is it. Tell us about your project. This is a, a chat box, right? Yeah. And so, you know, this industry is like 30 years old, right? Um, and the way that people have done it in the past is either they have someone uh, searching Google, listening to their news feeds, right? And then when they hear about something, they send out a newsletter or they send out a ping on a Slack channel or whatever it is, right? And you have some companies as well that have gone and aggregated some, some grants or at least the locations of where some grants may be um, that you can then go browse. Um, and, and the best way to do that until now has been keyword searching, you know? And so these, the programmers will sit there and say, okay, what's every possible keyword that someone may enter to find the, this kind of grant, right? Um, and, then, and then they do their best and they stick in a database. And if you happen to type in that same keyword, then it'll pop up. And if you don't, or they missed it, then, or if, you know, your brain works differently than their brain does, and you say a synonym of the word, you know, it's not going to catch it. Right. And that's the difference here is because uh, we are just taking uh, it conversationally, you know, like as if you were talking to your boss or your investor, what do you want to do? You know, what project do you want to do? What research do you want to do? So it will, t it will understand that it will, it's, you, yeah, I get that because, you know, filling out forms, um, well, look, grants require application forms, big ones, 
Yep. And so, and they're really specific with their wording. It's like, what, you know, because they're really trying to sort the wheat from the chaff. They're, they're passing you, right? So they are specific. But if you, if you don't know what language that they're using, what words, like you say, then you will miss it completely. You won't know it's even available because a Google search is not going to help you. And so you never hear about it. Yeah. And a lot of the times, you know, there's, uh, there's, uh, you're doing something and a grant comes out. That's just exactly what you're trying to do. And it's going to bring you to the next step. But if you don't hear about it, you know, you're not getting it. <laughs> yeah. So, so right. do a little, uh, let's do a little search then. Um, yeah. And let, let's go to, uh, let's do this on the fly. That's how confident I am in this thing. Let's okay. go to papers with code. Um, I don't know. That's a good one. I've guiding generation of counterfactual explanations through temporal background knowledge for predictive process monitoring. Wow. That's a handful. That's like a dissertation title. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, let's just take that and let's see what it pops out. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff there. Right. And it's going to find grants now based on that. It is. And it's going to tell you, you know, how to take this thing that you have and, and align it with what the grant wants to fund. Right. My guess here is that, um, it's probably going to pop out something where they want to use some kind of like language model or something like that to, um, do some data extraction from a bunch of text. Okay. So you've put that one title in there, which you found on the internet and yep. you've dumped it in here and said, let me find out if there's any grants available for this. So it's yeah. now put together a, a detailed description. So that, yeah, the project yeah. focuses on augmenting predictive process. And so systems. this, uh, what we've done, right, is we've taken that one liner and we've, ex we've expanded it into okay, this is exactly the project that you want to be doing. And this is the impact it'll have on your community or the, the world at large, right? So it's, it's taken it in, it's understood it, it's simplified it, it's summarized it, and it's talked about broader impact. Okay. Exactly. And so then, you know, this, this is what we want to know on a, from a platform perspective of what are you actually doing? Because there is the one-liner, the text, the, um, the technology that you put in there. Um, but what exactly are you thinking of doing with it? Right. And then, and why is that important? And so we can just skip, uh, click through this uh -huh. since this is a demo. And then we have some advanced filtering options that we can go through, um, a title for reference later, right? So we use keywords to really so hone gave, in. It gave you a project title. It gave you a product title. It gave you uh, 20 or so keywords. Um, and these wow. keywords are just to help us hone in. Uh, a good example is like, if I want to make after school programming uh, for youth and I really want to focus in on STEM, then STEM is a good keyword, right? Hmm. We'll leave those um, keywords there for now. Uh -huh. And then we have a couple more advanced options. Uh, monitor for new matching grants. Our system is always coming, combing the internet for new grants and if you have this box checked, then if one of them is a good match for this search that you're doing, then we'll send you an email about it. Wow. Um, you can filter by having research grants. We'll just leave everything checked. Okay. Um, and with some geographical filters, right? In 2.0 as well, um, we're really looking to help uh, broker the interactions between foundations and innovators. And so we'll be offering a, a side of it where, you know, you do this search and then funders will be able to come on here and say, Hey, I have money and I want to fund something in, I don't know, biotech, health tech, whatever it is. And then if it's a good match for what their criteria, then your thing will pop up and money might just drop into your lap. Wow. So you're almost creating a marketplace at that point. Exactly. Like that's, that's, well, that's, that's an ambition right there. If you can get that going. So yeah. And, and we have like some, angel, like, uh, then, then you start throwing in angel investors. Exactly. And private, <laughs> private lenders and, uh, you know, people providing like sort of debt hybrid com 
convertible notes and equity equity financing you start throwing vc capital in there yeah. this thing could go into a whole new level it could grow way beyond just providing grants and it can go even further than that into uh, contracts government state local um oh wow you know it can go into hey i've gotten a grant how do i get people to actually facilitate this so what's you know? stopping you from like constantly like how do you control and i know I know you have <laughs> scope crave. Yeah. How do you stop yourself from making everything like, mm, I know I can make a resume builder. Hmm. I know I can build <laughs> this. Hmm, I know like you have this base technology, which you can kind of like wrap something around and then you like package it, sell it, package it, sell it, package it. Like I can, I can imagine you almost like, had you sort of gone down the sort of internet marketing road and just figured out how to make just sales funnels and just like, run ads all the time like you just have like 50 different funnels at any given moment just with a different app a different widget being sold and it's like, <laughs> like i don't know Honestly. what stops you from becoming becoming the crazy creator like that um the big thing is a, a focus on impact yeah um and money right yeah um and so with with it's funny that you mentioned the uh, job and uh, like applicant tracking system thing because i actually uh, my first proof of concept of this was actually a um, job um, resume, job board. job board matching system. Yeah, I just threw it together like proof of concept in a day, and and that was the basis of of the engine that lies behind this now. Um, okay, let's just go back to the, okay. Well, yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, uh, you know, your mind goes wild with like all what's possible, and then you have to kind of give yourself a reality check and say, okay, well from like a branding side and uh realistically how much time do i have side uh you know what do i want to focus on and what do i want to do with this yeah i get that okay so right now on the screen what's happening is it's actually it's working i can see a, i can see a loading bus while we've just been speaking here it's been thinking it's been looking it's been analyzing well there we go it just finished oh yeah and so it found 300K over four grants. 300K over four grants. Four grants. And now keep in mind that it parsed through a couple thousand grants to come up with just these four. And you can be pretty much guaranteed that, you know, if it's not found in these four, then it's not out there. Oh, wow. So now this is, this is your shortlist. So now this is where you really get to work and you start making those applications, right? Exactly. And it's already given you some of the basics to get the application started, hasn't it? Exactly. How far down that rabbit hole can it take you? To actually oh, let me show you. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> because so this, if people haven't each... realized it, we've touched on it. There, This expands, right? This is like, if you want to use the job board example, this is the equivalent of like writing your resume, finding all the potential roles for you, and then actually going ahead and completing the application. <laughs> okay. Like this is starting to automate a hell of a lot of things that stop people from actually succeeding in life. And so this, if this does it with the grant, then it's, there's VC funding this, and this is just in this world of like using the marketplace scenario, but there's just so much, but okay, I'm going to stop. You keep going. <laughs> I'm like, I love your enthusiasm. No, I, I can't help. This is the thing. I'm all about this stuff. Like I'm, I talk to businesses. There are really sensible grassroots type of companies that are like, hmm, I know that's going to make money. It's going to make money today, made money 10 years ago. And even no matter what happens, it's going to make money 10 years from now as well. So great stuff. And then there's like, like interesting businesses, which I don't really get. But then there's also like this, which is like, this excites me because this is our current future. This is in motion. This is happening now. You know, you're accessible. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. And it's like, you know, like it, it, you, it's like when most people hear about AI and stuff, it's like these lofty leaders in their ivory towers far, far away. And it's like, but there's people out there like yourself, you that are creating these things that and, and you are going to make the biggest changes because what you're creating is accessible to a lot of people and you can start and you're the kind of guy that you could, someone could work with and say, Hey, let's build something together where, you know, if anyone had an AI idea, who's listening, go ahead and call open air and see how lucky you get, you know, call yeah. Tesla and say, Hey man, give me your AI data set so I can make this resume make it. Then you're not going to get a phone call back, but so working with someone like, like yourself is a completely different kettle of fish. So yeah. it, it is exciting. It, it is exciting. 
And and to give you an idea how rare this is, um, you know, there's only a, a handful of people in the world, probably a couple hundred, that know enough about AI to build their own language model, right? And then among those people, like how many of them also know how to build a full web application, front end to back end to cloud with database architecture and cybersecurity, right? Right. <clears throat> I may be one of the only people in the world uh, that has that that very unique skill set yeah um, that's pretty amazing that's pretty amazing um okay so 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 okay show me show me let me show you this yeah and so for uh for each of these things that i found right we'll tell you just the important stuff the title of the grants funding min and max if they have it deadline for application which agency is offering it and then we the next two things that we extract using our ai so the first thing is a high level. We tried to say, you know, this grant wants to fund things like blank, right? And so you can very quickly see, okay, that's not something I want to be looking at. So for this first one, right, uh, tackle urgent societal problems using um, scientific and engineering in dynamic systems, right? So if you understand what that means, because, you know, you're the expert in what you're trying to do, then you'll very quickly be able to see, okay, yeah, that's something I want to do and look into a little more and, or not. And then the second thing here is our qualified project suggestions. And so what we're doing is we're taking the information you gave us about the detailed description, the, Im the impact that you expect to have, and comparing it with the grants uh, solicitation, you know, it's what it wants to fund. And we're giving you ideas to... Uh, align yourself to say, hey, this is what you want to do, but if you use this approach or instead did something like this, then you would be a perfect fit for this grant. Wow. That that is and so it's it's taken Okay. So it's basically reading everything. Everything. Yeah. And it's connecting dots everywhere. So you're not having to do the thinking here. It's done it for you. So exactly. here's a grant. Here's all the all the, the information on this grant, which is probably reams thick, tons of pages. And it said, "Well, look, this is this is how you could work with it. This is how you could position yourself with this grant." Exactly. And so, for something like the uh, Nano Silver application I was telling you about before, you now they they would never have thought, you know, hey, if we put this into a fogger and then we can do some research on it that we need to do to make you know do our like human safe trials um de or determinations and we can use this grant to get us there you know and then there's other grants that's like you know hey if you put it uh, with a cauterizing agent and in a spray bottle then the dod wants that right uh, and so things like that where it's like we have our core idea of what we want to be doing or our core innovation innovation and if we adjust grabbed one extra thing and added it to this this mess that we're looking at or if we take this and we say okay let's just pull out a portion of this you know there are grants out there that will fund us and the system surfaces for you wow okay and so then you know we have this uh further ai um, feedback loop uh, reinforced um, rlhf so reinforcement learning with human feedback, right? And so- um, How do you store all this, in, like, all this information, by the way? Is this like, <laughs> oh, AWS? Is it like-, like, it's, like in a, it's in a massive database in the cloud, yeah. Yeah, okay. And it's like, I, I can only presume that if like, when you get a lot of people using this, this is where your, your data costs go through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And at some point, you know, I was, I've been following, uh, I think their name is Basecamp um for a while and you know they had these aws fees of like seven million a year eight nine million a year or something like that right and then they realized hey it actually only costs two million a year for us to have everything in-house and to do it all ourselves you know and so at some point i anticipate getting to a similar situation where it's like you know the cloud served me really well for getting off the ground and getting to a certain level and now that i'm here it'll be time to, to bring it in house and lock the doors. 
lock the doors. I mean, this be in is, charge of my own security. Yeah, I mean, this. But this. Uh, speaking of security, just the application of like having a technology like this that's not connected to a GPT or a large language model to, ha to be in ownership. Like you could apply this to security tasks, like in a closed loop. Like so. Oh, yeah. Um. Because like the logic behind all this, what it's doing, and I mean, there's just so many applications. It's just mind, it's just mind boggling. Um, but this is, this is great. So you're, so you're, it's now, it's making suggestions, it's matching you up. Now you can also feedback whether or not it's a good fit or it's relevant or not. Yeah. Relevant. And in the future, you know, the monitoring and alerts, um, it'll get better at identifying things that you care about or and, are relevant to you. And that's it. So that you, let's say you go ahead and you get successful, you get a grant. And then the next thing is you're working toward that effect, but this thing knows what you're looking for and says, boom, exactly. here, here's another one. Here, can you, can you see, like, here's how you can stack this grant with this one. Oh, look, here's a complementary grant. If you have these three together, you can go here. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> do you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Like, That's exactly it. Yeah. God, yeah. All right. And the beautiful thing with this is, you know, we're trying to connect you exact directly to the, the grant itself. And so you just click view and it'll bring you right to the listing. Um, very simple. Well, you've made something really awesome here. Um, and this is available to the masses. Like this is not like something you have to go through, like some crazy kind of wall garden, like that's only going to be available through Harvard's, you know, grant list or something like this is, this is going to be something that you've created for everyone to be able to access. Right. Well, yeah, certainly. I mean, you can go to my website right now, you know, buy a subscription and, and hop aboard, you know, and get funded. Life is better funded. Yeah, absolutely. You can't afford not to, not to hop on this. Yeah. Everyone needs money. It's the bartering tool we need to, to do anything in life. You know, like you want more money, you're going to spec, you're going to have to speculate to accumulate better or not better. If you can access capital, that's designed for your project, um, than to have to dig deep and do it yourself. You know, it, it's there, it's there, use it. It's, this is, this that's is, cool. this, this is essentially free money. You just got to do a little bit of work to position yourself correctly with the people that will be happy to give it to you on a silver platter. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. So, wow. You know, one, you asked me earlier about, um, motivations for starting this and, uh, I, I put it into words recently, you know, capital is the driving force that unites, uh, ideas and unites efforts. Right. And, and that's what I want to promote among, among, you know, people of the world is, especially in my local communities, you know, there's so many people that have ideas and are hardworking and they're doing their, the very best. Uh, but at some point, right. Everyone's going to come across a need to work with someone else, get some capital and you know, how do they do that? And so with this, we're really lowering the bar so that people, hardworking people of each community can become the heroes of their community uh, through their ideas and through their hard work and through the collaboration with others, right? And all made possible with this. That's extremely powerful. That's a, that's a mission statement and a half. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. That's cool. All right. Um, so what I'd like to do is show you, uh, give you a sneak peek on what we're doing next. Okay. See, this is not like one of those, my usual podcasts where I'm like, I've always got like a, like 1500 questions and trying to cram into <laughs> the, this one. You, if, if anyone's listening, I like, I'm just shell shocked the whole way through. I'm like, uh-huh. Wow. It's like nonstop. Wow. <laughs> like, this is stuff's cool. I love this. So let's see here. I'm like, what can we build together? <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but, I, but this is the thing. Like, you're, you have to stay on task. That's the problem. It's like you have such a mission here. That mission is there's a lot of work that you have to do with it. You have to get people on your team. Not Forget about people pulling you off your mission. You've got to just get more and more and more people involved in what you're doing so that you right. can actually make the waves that you make, you're intending to make. And, you know, the funny thing about this is it's very much a, a network building exercise, you know, because the more people we have uh, looking for stuff, the more people we can pull on that want to throw money at, at those people. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. And so this is now what's coming up is version, version two. 
Version two. Version two. And let me That's that's um my mind is spinning with different I think when people talk about like applications of AI, a lot of it's harebrained. Harebrained stuff. And then you're seeing like these like really nifty little cool companies just pop out everywhere. Like especially in like the creative spaces, like the you know, photography, you know, the the things that are really, really designed for the mass market to quickly adopt, to collect a lot of information, to get a lot of that that you know, to benefit from that feedback loop that you talked about. Um, I, I almost feel like there's a lot of AI applications that are designed specifically to trigger that feedback loop to help build on their own AI brain data in and of itself. And you can kind of see the mission, but this is this with, with, with a lot of those businesses, but with, because it's designed to just make their business better, right? Whereas I feel like this one is a, is slightly different. It definitely, obviously, part of that exists here too. But this is really using a really complex AI system, but in a traditional sense to really help people just do something that's quite fundamental. And, and it's not like, you know, friggin' just give me your selfie and I'll give you a makeover AI. It's like it's like it's it's it, this is a bit more everyday business, everyday person needs to they're at, they're at university college they're really keen on a specific area they want to find a grant how do they go about yeah. doing it you know in colleges and universities you get you get the little the, the, the sheet of paper that hangs on the bulletin board for like grants available like that's that is not exactly the best shortlist to be going by you know <laughs> not at all no exactly and, you know you go to the website on their intranet, their, their internal internet. And then they, there's like the little forum where some people talk about it. Again, that's not exactly the best place to go to access this kind of information, to access the money you need. Google's not going to give it to you in the way you want it to. This is like the only thing out there that I've ever, you know, and, it, and this is the beauty of being in the situation you're in. You are, this is one of one that like you are the first to be doing this right now. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that you bring up universities um, I just recently read an article uh, talking about um, some lady who had been doing mRNA research for like 30 years. And then just last year, she won a Nobel Prize because AI was help her, was able to help her reposition uh, her research in a way that a grant wanted to fund. Look at that. Right? And so and that's, that's exactly what we're doing. And that's literally, that's, yeah, that's literally just shifting the lens slightly, just slightly. Like the targets have just moved almost yeah yeah exactly you know we we really hope that you know people in university researchers they're sitting on these these groundbreaking ideas that are going to bring you know global um clean energy and uh, all sorts of like you know hollow deck star trek everything right you know and they're sitting on these without a way to uh, get in front of someone uh you know in a way that care, they they would care, right? In a way that they could commercialize it and get funded, um, and that's where we'd like to start with this. Is you know, let's break into those arenas, help those underfunded professors um, reposition themselves and their research and what they're doing in a way that someone will care about and want to throw money at them, um, and with an emphasis on commercialization. Right? Wow. Okay. Um, so we can just run through this. And so this is the same view we were seeing before where uh, we've done a search and here are your results later. And so there's actually this button here. You may notice a little difference. Start proposal. Oh, wow. Okay. So now this is, this is, this is that part I was talking about, about creating the application. Now this starts exactly. start going down that rabbit hole of putting together your pitch deck, your proposal. Exactly. I see so many business applications for this too. And so, you know, you click, let's go. We gave you a couple options. You can edit what exactly you want to be doing. You know, we really want to capture here. What are you exactly going to do and how, right? Um, and so we'll just select this one. You can go 
to the actual, we'll have you go to the actual um, listing and get the section requirements. So oftentimes applications will have a, a really long like form to fill out with like, we need a cover letter and, and we need a uh, brief description on who's on the team and what you'll be doing and where and what facilities, you know, and all these things. And it's so different from grant to grant. And so if you ever see this um, requirements and headers page, then you'll know you're the first one on our system to look at the grant. Oh, wow. Okay. And so when you create this, like how much work do you have to go through to actually build these steps out? Is this, or is this kind of done with the, with the AI model too? Does it kind of help you along the way? And so the AI model will help with actual drafting of the, of the, what do you call it? App proposal of the different sections. Okay. Um, it looks like my keyboard just died. Oh yeah. <laughs> Awkward. That's fine. If it, if you can't demo it right now, then if the keyboard died, then we can just switch to like, we can explain it and we'll just switch back to the normal camera. That's cool. Yeah. I have uh, extra batteries here. We'll, all right. We'll, we'll check. That's because you've yep, been coding coming. for so long and typing, just tapping away on the thing. <laughs> I just happen to have uh, two AA batteries, right? <laughs> just happened. Right this, this, is, this clearly is something that's happened before. It's just, oh, look, hang on a sec. Like, I can only imagine how much coding gets is involved with just setting this stuff up. Yeah. And so I'll just add a couple of sections here for, for example. Um, so you're going to go into the application and then you tell you kind of look at the application and then pull the, the headers off and then add it here and this thing's then going to create and the thing. requirements yeah oh wow and and so this will help inform our ai of what do you need to see in this section to be successful because one thing that especially like federal level grants the grant makers or grant evaluators do is they'll first look at your cover letter and say is this related to what you know is there an alignment here and then they'll go look at your team and they say, is this team seem like they're qualified to do the work? And then they'll go through and actually read your application. And sometimes if they have a, uh, a software system on top of it with like formatting requirements, then the software system will check the formatting requirements, make sure, you know, everything was Times New Roman, font 12, right? And if you're off there, then it'll get tossed out. Okay. And by the way, how long did it take you to create something? How did, did I say something like this? How did you, how long did it take you to create this? One week. One week. One week. Wow. Okay. Good well, that's a shame. Me. Looks like I still have a You said it was beta. You said it was, it's, it's not it was beta. beta. You said it's a sneak peek. Um, but what you'll see here is a, a, a word processor, right? Mm -hmm. With a button that says, have AI write it. Mm -hmm. And so then you'll be able to click through your different um, sections and write it all down, export it to, to Word, um, and then have AI reword or draft your proposal. In Wow. See, that, that's brilliant. And, um, and again, the AI, the language that it's using is not as flowery, I noticed, as a uh, as chat GPT likes to get, do you know the amount of times, um, when, so people send me business plans a lot and like, and you know, like, cause I, you know, I help people get, get set up. I help people get situated with their business to get it off the ground and how they can access, how they can access, um, funding. You know, I, I am, you know, we're essentially partnered with a number of different stakeholders who are, a combination of accredited investors, private lenders, and, and the big ones are essentially like very, like VC, a, a VC, a couple of VC companies that focus on bootstrap companies with like around 250 to 500 ARR. So it's like, it's not K, you know, thousands. It's, it's not, we're not talking. So they're looking to get like pre seed that people who haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, and one of the things, and by the way, I, yeah, don't even get me started. Of course I can see the bet, the, the, the synergies, but like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to even say it, but like, um, like this is again, the manual version, right? The me just kind of like 
bringing things together right but what i'm getting at is actually the amount of people that come up with these business plans and stuff and, and they've used chat gpt um to actually put together everything and you and they and you catch the words like delve yeah. like you know like how many times is it, like, delve into the world of like what the hell like you're writing a <laughs> fantasy book like like my favorite uh, is uh say goodbye to say hello to oh yeah yeah say hello to <laughs> your new thing and say goodbye to all these problems and it's just like it, i can't remember them all now but the problem is is that it's it and sometimes it's normal vernacular is but the trouble is because chat gpt is overusing it now you just can't you basically have to write but make sure you're not sounding like chat gpt um yeah but I noticed as I was skimming through the words here with yours, the point I'm getting at, um, it you're not it's not doing that. It's not getting flowery. It's it's really being it's a it's staying true to what task is, right? To the it, point. But how yeah. do you stop that? Is it is this is this like a thing that's just common amongst all AI just to get really like flamboyant with its wording or like no, and so it has a lot to do with the data that was trained on. With GPT, right, they scraped the whole internet to get all of the the data needed to train it uh, so fully um with and so you know if you think about all the reddit uh, uh threads and the facebook posts and the you know everything everything like that um you know you kind of realize oh wow you know people don't really use proper english or mm -hmm. you know there are these cliche phrases that people do use and that's why they're cliche and the language model picks it up on that and thinks that it's that's acceptable and that's quality right right and so with what we have right we have a different data set um and it's really focused in on on academic type language right and hence the the clarity my background you know i've done a lot of research uh in uh, for machine learning in the past uh, published a couple papers and so my my wording is very much very dense very academic um but it and needs to be for this though it has to it be. needs to be for this because it, you know you need clarity in exactly what you're doing and why I mean, it's important what, what if you did this what if you work with the friggin home office like here this is how you can immigration paperwork <laughs> right <laughs> like, like like you could apply this I know you're you're building your thing, but see, I'm getting pulled, and I'm and I'm not even you, and I'm like, it's like, but it's like, there are so many applications for this. Where, yeah, definitely with immigration paperwork, um, with any anything that has a is is a has a massive gatekeeper, you know, a really big strong gate, like obviously grants, obviously funding, fun, money's money's an obvious one, but there are other things too, you know, there are things like you mentioned, tenders like you said uh states state tendering and stuff a tendering database this thing could be running as a tendering platform uh <laughs> for construction companies on state projects and stuff like that oh yeah um it's like that it's like the, the longer i think on it just the more stuff crops up and um, i almost think that like you could just repackage the brain because it's, it's almost like and i'm i'm sure people have already come to you with that one like hey give me the brain just give me the <laughs> give me the uh, the un the stuff that's under the hood, you know. Uh, Actually, not system. not yet. Um, you'd be surprised. I think you know we're still new enough, and that and people haven't quite realized what we have yet. That you know we, we've been safe so far. If safe is a good word for that, because well, you just like <laughs> like you can keep on building your thing out, but you could just license the the engine yeah. engine off. You know what I mean? It's like okay. Oh yeah. Like here, I need some money anyway. So hey, you can have this for a hundred mil. Um, Honestly, you know, yeah. like you can use that for your own ends. I could, you know, you could see friggin' network providers, cellular network providers, using it to maintain nodes all around the world. You, I could be anything, man. Like this is because <laughs> it's not. It's because it's not. The point I'm making is it's not. I'm not talking about the practicalities of AI here. I'm talking about the practicality of having your own one that's not connected to that massive data set yep. that exists in open AI, because that's what everyone's thinking about. I'm like, yeah, but you're now you're letting whoever that is into your business. You know, this is different. This is your training it, right? You're, you're, you've created it for, to a specific purpose. That's different. Um,
Wow. Well, there's so many options. So what's your plans now? Like you're, you, you created this platform. It's designed for the masses. People can access it. They can get funding. It works. You've got these version two, uh, options. Clearly you're, 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 you're built and you're having to go through that beta stage and bug fix and do that, but that's going to eventually start working. That was a week ago. Cause we spoke about a week and a bit ago. Yeah, so, it started on Thursday, actually. <laughs> so see the speed at which you can create. So where are you going? How far yeah. down? How far? I was about to say far, far down the rabbit hole. But like how how much of what we've just kind of like spoken on, are you going to pursue this? Or are you going to like kind of batten down the hatches and then look to, okay, I've built something that's MVP ready. This now just needs to scale up and be profitable before I start developing more. Like what's going to be your, your mental, or are you just stuck on developing? Like, that's it. I can't do anything. <laughs> no. Like what's your plan? No. Um, yeah. So what we're doing right now is, is we're focusing in where we're located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, and we are working Dude, with, I just, a, I just started a show, the King of Tulsa. I'm just saying, I just started <laughs> three episodes. In. Tulsa King. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, <laughs> no, I love Sylv Sylvester Stallone as an actor. <laughs> put it on the map right. for me, man. I didn't know. Yeah. Honestly, uh, everyone, I moved here about three years ago and everyone, when they saw that movie was like, what Tulsa is a thing. You didn't yeah. just move somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's just this oh, random wow. blip on the map. It, it's yeah. we're a growing community here, you know, and I'm, I'm really proud to be a part of, of the growth at this early stage. And, but yeah, so we're working with a couple of you know, community partners at the moment, um, working to, really prove that we can at scale um bring people who are um in either like a, a university position or a, a local uh for-profit non-profit position um that are ready to take the next step right of of i had this idea and i've been working on it for a while and now i just need money to to get off the ground or you know uh, get to the next location and so our goal is to is to is to bring all these people to a point where we can make heroes out of them by successfully getting them funding successfully helping them uh, achieve their dreams and then showcase it yeah you need those uh, we, case studies just yeah we, many. we really want to build a network of success you know so if you if you come with us and you hop on our platform, get the funding, you know, we're going to talk about you. We're going to advertise you to, to the grant makers, um, and other entrepreneurs that are out there. So that's two forms of handholding. So they should come in, the AI will handhold them and get them through this very, very, very long and lonely process of filling out application forms, searching, sifting through grants. Handheld through there. And then on top of that, because it's such early stage and because you are at an early stage in this business, you'll help those people even more by helping by showcasing them, doing case studies on them yep. and positioning them even further within your platform, um, to be accessible by more funding providers. Exactly. You know, we really want to showcase that, you know, the American dream is a reality. You know, you can come from, uh, a backwood, backwood neighborhood. And if you have enough grit and enough uh, determination to follow through on your goals, then you can achieve your dream. You can make the kind of impact that you want to make. Uh, and you can join a community of people who are doing the same. Hey, so what about, by the way, and because this is a, an AI model, why can't you apply this to England and China or maybe not China, but England? Uh, oh, yeah. No, European we certainly countries. can. I mean, even China, if that, I mean, you have to probably give it to them. <laughs> tell it off. They're not going to let you run it from the US. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think there's major opportunity for international markets. Um, our system is built in a database agnostic manner. And so, you know, everything that comes into the system can be used by the system um, at scale. And so, you know, we'll, you know, we're starting in the US, uh, gathering all the uh, federal, state, local, private grants out there. And then when we're, when we've grown big enough, we'll move, you know, Canada, England. Yeah. I mean, um, there's a lot here. I know we're always right? talking about on the news of anything. I mean, they've got to be a lot, but see, again, mm -hmm. I don't have no idea how many are there. It's like, I'm going to have to what, find a report in the economist 
one year so from you know one one it, do you see that that's how you'd normally know you wouldn't otherwise know there's no like listing anywhere it's like because they come from so many different places so many different executive branches and areas yeah. of the government and it's like so how do you do it and normally you will rely on a newspaper really you know traditionally something like the economist that's a bit more of a authority in the space or a thoughtful kind of publication where they would yeah. probably list a whole here's a car and then a couple of graphs and here's how many things get funded from this one and various others and you'll have those in a special report this is your instant access special report this is where you can go in and access so and uh, customized listen, for you right what's that <laughs> it's customized for you yeah exactly instant exactly. access for you all right we have awesome. gone over an hour I, I like to keep these things an hour but i feel like <laughs> there's more you see i can't really wrap up a conversation with you because my brain just keeps searching for other things and it's it's one of those kind of conversations and i'm sure you must it might be the same for you because there's always everything. There's always a new question. There's always something that can be built, something that can be created. I mean, for everyone else out there that's like listening to this and thinking, man, how do I get involved with AI? Well, first off, this dude's got his own mission. Okay. So Wesley's got his own, his own, his own mission. He's got his own plan. Um, but how does people, how do people get into this space? Would you recommend like for the newbie, Go open AI. If they wanted to build an AI application for their business, go to open AI, access the API, and then find like people out there to help build something. Because I feel like every, it's such a general tool. I think everyone has to have some level of it involved in their company now. Certainly. Yeah. Um, so my suggestion is with every AI application that you're looking at, always start with the business. Um, otherwise, you know, you're going to get the same, the same result that, We've been seeing in the industry, which is you know 80, 85 percent of of AI projects fail, um, and the reason for that is because it's not grounded in the business use case. And so, find the business use case, find uh, follow the process of okay, we start here, then people do this and this and then this, and then look at that flow of the problem and uh, the thing that you're looking at, and then actually. Uh, identify, okay, well, this thing, if an AI was there, could do it much faster and better, right? Um, and so getting into the space, if you're not familiar with AI, um, honestly, the language models like ChatGPT, they have lowered the bar for AI because before then, before them, uh, you very much had to have a lot of data in order to build anything meaningful or uh, be able to get a lot of data very quickly um, and have you know, like the reinforcement learning st style where you start somewhere and it's bad at first, but then once people use it enough, it can, becomes better, right? Um, so, you know, GPT is great. Um, that's a great place to start just to get familiar with like what's possible um, and also to educate yourself. You know, GPT was trained on the internet, which means it was trained on all the free research that's been out there. You know, so use it as a tool for tutoring. Um, use it as a uh, a rubber duck to s splash ideas off of, right? I do. I definitely do it all the time. Yeah. You know, it, it, and so, you know, if you can get to a point where you can um, either start having an idea of, okay, this is what AI can do for me, which is typically uh, classification, regression, um, the recommendation, or uh, generative images and text, then, um, then applying that to the business use case will, will make the, like, how do I do this? Or how do I get involved with AI? Or how do I get AI in t inside what I'm doing? Um, that'll become crystal clear. Okay. All right. Well, listen, I, I, I think you and I are going to have conversations on marketing and stuff, because it's like, you're at such an early stage. And I think people need to, to hear about to hear about your platform because I think that the strongest way, you know, for people to get involved is through recommendation and sort of leveraging word of mouth. Um, and I think that's going to be very beneficial for especially what you're doing, because it's not just, Hey, it's an AI. It's, it's really, it's the fundamental purpose is to access grants. And I think we'll definitely have more conversations about that. And I'd like to get you on to talk about, you know, case study scenarios of our own, not, our own, but like, just, we'll just figure something out that we know is interesting. And then we'll say, let's start applying this to that because it's just going to be a cool, 
cool conversation um, about the application and how we can, and not just the, and forget just the application, how to construct something, how to build something, how to create the thing. How to think about it, thing. yeah. The fun stuff, the really nitty gritty stuff. I think we should do that. This is the, the this is the, you know, the synopsis, the summary. This is just the introduction to to Wesley Stevens. I'm going to be watching you real close, man, um, in terms of how you're going to be growing. Uh, so yeah, first, I look forward to those conversations in future. Mm. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure, Sav. And um, it's always a pleasure to to talk with you as well. And thanks for having me on your podcast. Awesome, man. And it will be, this is the first of many. <laughs>